What do you give it? He a? loves. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she loves that thing that I hate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's how that works. Sure. Some people's trash or other people's treasures. Yep. That's my family. My trash is their treasure. My apple trash is their treasure. Or as Zumoff would say, turning garbage into gold. <laughs> hey, look yeah, at let's do it. I think nah, we can start a show. Let's, let's start, start a show. the show. Cue music. Beep, boop. What's up, everybody? It's time for the Prodigal Sons Podcast. Yay. Muhammad Ali said it best. If you even dream about beating us, you better wake up and apologize. Wow. Okay. I just wanted to see if I could blow the mic out. How y'all doing out there? We got Sean Conroy. Hey, how are you? We got Elijah Griffin, little sweet. Yes. It's the sweet one. We got Tommy Boy. We got the best producer in the whole podcast game, which would be Sarah. Ayo. We got Lily. Hello. After eight weeks, he finally learned how to speak. It's a miracle. He's it's progress. Spoke. Progress and baby steps around here. Uh, yeah. He speaks. He's like, all right, I'll never do that again. His voice came with the raising of Jesus. He's like, hello. <laughs> Yeah, we used to do his words. Hey, listen, it's all that matters. He, he stepped like, up. Beep, boop. Hey, true, <laughs> true. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, you. Yeah. Not, not, not understanding what that means. Oh, you understand. Go back and watch past episodes. Speak my language. Just about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your mediator, oh. Dave. <laughs> hey, how are you? Oh, wait, that's not it. Hey, you guys. Yeah, that's mediator. me. Nice, uh. Dave. You guys didn't let me speak. You got too excited about that Muhammad Ali thing, didn't you? Yeah, I know. Nice. Yeah. Flow like a us. butterfly. Sting like a bee. That's mm-hmm. not nice. No. Why'd you call me that? I'm sorry. Wow. wow. Speaking That's... of which, today <laughs> we're talking about on our 55th episode. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. We're talking mm-hmm. about Easter Part 2, The Aftermath. He's back. Easter Part 2? East, we're trying to come up with a movie title for Easter Part 2. Where, who's we? When did that happen? Me and Elijah. Oh. Easter Part 2. It? I did. He's back and better than ever. Mm-hmm. The stone has been turned. Oh, you guys yeah. definitely talked about this. No, <laughs> <man. You're not laughs> That's up. bad. They've been practicing yeah. all yeah, the Yeah, man. Like actually, coming no, up with these. We are, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've only came up with like, the first two together, but now they just, you know. Now they're just coming up. Now they're just like, rolling, right? So I have a serious question for you. I, I hate to get the show off on a serious topic, but oh. I really, really, something's been burning deep down in my soul. I got to get it out. Oh, boy. Why are you a Yankees fan? Oh, boy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, just w- winners want to win, man. And haters want to hate. I, got, I wanted to ask you guys this week. We have nothing to say back to that, do we? No. Okay. 2008, that's it. That's it. Go ahead. We're just going to get the show off the rails right away. I want to ask you guys, what's the, what is your favorite thing to dunk in milk? Uh, you know what? Nothing. What? Un American. So the other night. But I can tell you what's. If it's un American, right? I am Puerto Rican, which is American. But here's what I do dunk. What do you dunk? Bread in my coffee. Bread in your coffee. He does it too. Yeah, I do it too. I yeah, but is your coffee sweet? Very sweet. That's mm-hmm. why. That's why you can the, do it. The bread usually is too. Yeah. 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 And the other thing I do that people think is really nasty is I get a cup of coffee. And then I put a bunch of saltines in there. Oh. And once they get soggy, I eat them. Oh. Yeah, They're that, delicious. That, that I don't do, but I do do the saltines with the butter on them. And dunk them? And dunk them in the yeah, coffee. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of similar it's to that. Listen, yeah, it's delicious. I'm not that. knocking it. I'm Literally, just surprised to hear it. upstairs get some saltines and some butter so they can try it right now. Let's do it. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. A little bit? Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so last week, you, might, you guys might have noticed... There was a little bit of an absence of a Prodigal Sons podcast. We decided we were a little uh, burned out, and we wanted to take a uh, – oh, I was going to take a mental health day, and Sean said we should all take a mental health day. And so we kind of played hooky. We kind of watched a movie. We kind of got what got some junk food at the store. <laughs> and we got some Oreos, and, and, and I dunked them in some milk, and it led to the question. Duncan. Saw that? Her Duncan. Yeah, was What's the time. best thing to dunk in milk? So Tom's answer is nothing. You don't dunk anything. Because I, I, hands down, Oreos are the best thing to dunk in milk. I dunk a bunch of cereal at a time, and I eat nah, it. Nah, get out of here. Elijah, can you help me out here? <laughs> 
There is not much that I dunk in milk, but the go-to is an Oreo. They do or a Oreo or a chocolate chip cookie. Chocolate chip cookies. Other right. than that, or else. all these makes these things. Actually, other people probably do too. It's just the knockoff version that I like. The Dunkers. They're chocolate chip cookies that are like shaped like biscotti, and you dunk them, and oh my those goodness. are good. That's a good thing. Like Sean just gained a pound thinking about yeah, that. I'm, I'm going to run all these on my way home. Yeah. Can you pick me up some? Um, they're going to be closed. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate I'll it. i grab whatever's left. <laughs> I actually like graham crackers. I like to dip my graham crackers in I, milk. I've gotten a little burned out on the graham cracker, yeah. but yeah. I, I have to switch up. I go from regular grit to the cinnamon cookie. Yes, ones. because if you just do the honey all the time. Yeah. No, you got to switch little, it up a little bit. So here's yeah. a question. Is it yeah. whole milk 1%, 2%, or fat-free? Uh, it's uh, fat-free almond milk in yeah, my all, household. Almond milk Interesting. In my household. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we do that. I have yet to dip a cookie in almond milk. But, Good stuff. But the first time we went to the Dunkin's, actually, and we were like, eh, it's pretty good. And now I'm like, son, what do we need? Almond milk. All right, I'll get half a gallon. And he's like, it's gone. I'm like, all right, so I got to buy like two half gallons of almond milk. So You know what the only thing that almond milk can't compete with regular milk for? And it's only the one thing. Hot chocolate. Macchiato. You cannot steam almond milk the same way you can no. milk. And it just it tastes different. And in Puerto Rico, I fell in love with that macchiato latte situation down there. Do you have a frother? No, that's what I have uh, Brood Awakening for. Mm. Main Street, Royers Ford, 3rd and Main. Check them out. I Eight, do got to check them out. I haven't yet. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You haven't checked them out yet? I haven't. I've never been there either. I'm going to tell you, I know a kid who used to walk to school <clears> to the <throat> bus stop and stop in there and grab a smoothie every morning. Is that you? No, that's the one that's, that spoke today. Ah, uh, he has uh, spoken. Yeah, he They knew spoken. him. He was a regular in there, just like you were probably. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I, I believe your family's a regular. I think it's uh, I think it's seven days a week there. Okay. I think they dedicated a corner to you. I saw, the so Facebook, I saw the Facebook pictures of, of the family at, at the coffee shop. Was I nice. wasn't there. No, they, I, without they, me. they did. Ah! They, de yeah. they definitely <laughs> wasn't there. <laughs> so I would like to start a protest. Actually, now that I give them a plug, I'm going to protest them right on the air. They don't open early enough. Mm -mm. Nah, they open at 8. I leave for work at like 6.45. I need, you know, I need to spend more money there and, and they I won't leave, let me. And I leave for work at 5.45. So if they're open, I'd much rather go there than to go to that other place that's watered down that has the same name similar to you. Donuts? That's not yeah. So uh, that make sure... New England tradition right there. That's why it sucks. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So make sure you like, rate, review our page, hit subscribe, share, go to Brood Awakening and then tell them to open early. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Wait, you said sucks on the air, and you're upset about it? You, your partner over there has done a lot worse. No, I'm sorry. Tom just gave me the dagger no, eye. Because he's the funniest dude in the world. He'll, he'll, he'll literally call anything out that goes wrong in the show and let the audience in with it. Like, uh, Tom pierced me with his eyes. Your yeah. eyebrows look really, really good, Tom. They're on fleet. Have I? I have Is a, that a word? Isn't it fleet? On fleet. <laughs> Oh, fleet. With Look at the Look at the Look at the K. All right. I'm so old. We, we, wow. we, we know what the next TikTok video is going to be on fleet. <laughs> so, wow. Then you hear a cricket type. There's too many pictures of Tom on different boats. <laughs> Zero views. <laughs> fleet. fleet. But the hair is very, very Tiburon like. Tiburon? Shark. A tip. Oh, wait, a Tiburon is a shark? Ever since I was in the shark suit. There you go. Thank you. Thank. Now, do you, when you go to sleep, do you have to keep moving? <laughs> now that you're half shark. You know what's so. weird? When I wake up, it just it looks just like this. It doesn't. I don't get the bed head anymore. I guess because it's all in the middle. So instead of counting sheep now, do you sing Baby Shark to go to sleep? <laughs> baby don't, Shark. Don't, shark don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. I can put it on. I just, no, I'm good. Okay. Oh, well, don't. actually, Elijah's got a story for us for next show, maybe. Oh, my. Don't you have? Then Santa bring you a, a a suit that fits. Um, it's I April. Actually, put on yeah, a, a couple Santa's pounds. Santa's on the beach. So oh, so I got sent a, oh. a, a T Rex costume. Yeah, inflatable one, and I was so excited to wear it. I was feeling like if Did I you put wear it, it to on, work? I was feeling like if I put it on, I would be so on fleet that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to live that one down. But, oh, no, but it didn't fit. I am old. So it got returned, and Santa Sarah said, hey, here's another one. <laughs> and now 
It's going to fit. I haven't tried it on yet. I keep getting hounded by a little E to, you got to wear it. You got to wear it. You got to put it on. You got to do a TikTok with it on. And I'm like, no. And he's like, yes. And this, I'm probably going to lose. So you'll probably see me with it on. Soon. Let me know. I'll, I'll join you with the shark. Okay. So speaking of fitting into stuff, oh boy. Sean has an announcement. Ah. I do have an announcement. So, Dave, I re-examined your application for extension. Is this because the lawyers contacted you? They did. Okay. And... uh I don't have $25,000. So <laughs> we have decided we're going to extend the weight loss challenge till the end of the year. That's, that's awful generous of you. I thought so. Well, I, it, it gets me, helps me get closer to my goal by giving me more time. That's, that was my thinking. Yeah. Well, and my thinking was. I don't have $25,000 to pay your lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. So somebody's got to pay his bill. Is this a nonprofit? Can we? I think we can write it off on taxes. Excellent. Why is everybody looking at Cause me? Because you're, you're gearing up to say something. We <laughs> know you. You're all, you all, you're all, you're all <laughs> We know him. You're about to say I, I was just going to say in you're a very, my, in a very in I was going to say in a Here very nicely, nicely way that yeah. I'm glad that it got extended to the end of the year because my <laughs> client is not taking it seriously. Well, here's the thing. I actually, because. I don't know why I call it my client. I haven't done anything. <laughs> my clients. <laughs> No, uh, so I actually was able to walk the other day for the first time for fun. I hope you walk every day at some point. I haven't been able to walk on my ankle unless it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> so now that I can walk again, I'm pretty sure that there'll be some weight loss in my future. And in a week or two, I'm going to try the bicycle. Yeah, we should go on a bike ride. And I got to get a bike. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I was thinking we could all get together, go for a bike ride to the ice cream store. We should do that. <laughs> The one right around the corner. That's like a house. two. That's like a two. I've never second. been. Yeah. I've never a been there yet. Ride. But, and by go for a ride, I mean we just put the bikes in the back of my truck and we we'll go and go for a ride. Only if I can ride in the bed. No, no problem. Can I? Can I stand and like bed surf on the way there? Absolutely. Can, can I team wolf it? Team wolf yeah, it. Exactly. That's on fleet. No. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Teen Wolf. You're next. Teen I'll find something. Don't worry. I'm sure you will. I'm not worried. <laughs> When you least expect it. Teen Wolf is on fleet. That would have been one of those things, too, that I would have thought I was 100% right. <laughs> we should have let him go. We should have let him If you would have saw Elijah's it. face after you said that, <laughs> it, hurt, like, it hurt my heart. Because you said it. You turned around. It's like somebody hit him with a tennis racket. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. hit him with a two-by-four. And, and, like, and I'm so naive that I thought the look on his face was surprised that he knew I knew the word. <laughs> I thought he was like, well, he's cool. I'll put you like this. This is how sarcastic he is. Even if you knew the word and you said that, he would have looked at me and he would have mouthed that. He would have mouthed it. I would have knew this. He would have mouthed it. He would have said, Dad, that's so four years ago. Uh, <coughs> oh, even if I'd said flea. Even if you would have said it, it right. It's, it's he not, it's is not, it four? It's no, no more. Fleek, about four years? Yeah, fleekness see? is gone. Oh, yeah. Fleekness has fleekness has fleek. Fleek out. So what's the new what's the new on fleek? I don't know. I what's, don't know. What's the new on fleek, Elijah? Um, it's silence. It is silence. That's the new on fleek. Hmm. Very nice. Think about it. On point. On point. That's, that's old. I, that's old. Yeah, I can get behind that. Back Ma again. So that's like fat. bottoms. Mad fat. Ph. Ph. <sighs> Which? Yeah. Yeah, that's just what nothing. Say, no, no, I'm done. Right. Right, I like I like where you were going with it, Dave. You were so on point with this thing. <laughs> I don't even know what to do from here. Everybody, have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we now need another week off to yeah. reset the old. Brain. So, see you in two weeks. <laughs> we're on our uh, <laughs> or two fleeks. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A fortnight? A fleek night? A fleek night? <laughs> I'm not going to hear the end of this. Four thing. scores and two fleeks to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're talking about nothing for you, Tom. We're Sorry. talking about Easter today. We got an Easter game hosted by yours truly, Sean Conroy. Uh, am I doing it or is Sarah yeah. reading it? I don't know. Somebody. I think it's Sarah. It's Sarah. Sarah's reading the. Hello. I, I mean, I can put down this raspberry pie. <laughs> I don't know why you would. That's some delicious pie. It is. Sarah was. I got like she, two... she was just mentally checked. She's like, I can't deal with these guys. I had a whole week off, and now they come back like this. I what think from. Heck? I think on Tuesday nights between seven and eight, it's just her moment of zen. She, she, does, just, she just chills does all these. Out. After she hits live, she goes <laughs> click. Yeah, she hits live and then just goes to her happy meditative place because she, <laughs> otherwise we'd be in trouble. Yeah, I have earplugs. I have crochet. I have Mario Kart. I got everything. Um, well, the I... question is, do you have? 
Would You Rather Easter Edition. I do have uh-huh. the Would You Rather Easter Edition. It's like an Easter springish. Easter spring collection. Springish. Yeah, it's from a, the spring catalog. From the Sears catalog. What? I Sears and not. Robux. Sears it, and Robux, yes. Robots. The religious Easter and the secular Easter <laughs> all all rolled together. Yeah. Yeah. L- little this, little that. Yeah. Would you rather plan an Easter egg hunt for the little kids in your neighborhood or no. write an article about Easter egg hunts which would be published in your newspaper? I would rather plan the Easter egg hunt than write. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't want to do either. Let's be clear. But your if we plan the Easter egg, I would make it the hardest Easter egg hunt It'd ever. Be fun. Dude, I'm so tired of these Easter egg hunts. They just throw them out in the lawn. No, 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 no. It's up that tree. It's 26 feet up. You want that Hershey's kiss? You better go work for it. <laughs> you Fire department on standby. <laughs> I'm hiding them in Michigan. <laughs> Good luck, Royers, for trying to find those. I'd put them down in the sewer. I'd put them up in the trees. Oh, yeah. These kids are working for it. No, they need to learn. Put them down in the sewer with a couple red balloons hanging out of the sewer grate. (laughs) I was about to say that. Tough love. So I guess we all agree. No. And by the way, for like 30 kids, three eggs. Some of you going to win, some of you going to (laughs) lose. There's 35 eggs out there. You've got got a 10% chance. Good luck. See if you're one of the lucky ones. Let me see. It's like the Hunger Games. I guess I got to write an article. Yeah. (laughs) On Uh, how cheesy... Some of these <laughs> Easter egg hunts are, like you said, they just throw them in the lawn. Have at it. What would be funny is if you tied balloons to some of the eggs, so they're like just out of the kids. Oh. <laughs> no, put them on a drone. Put them on a drone. <laughs> <laughs> just keep flying. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have real ones. When it smacks them in the head, it just breaks open. <laughs> Those aren't hard boiled. Which one's hard to have drones? Which one is hard boiled? Oh, we that should one. do that too. Mm-hmm. We could paint the eggs, but they're not even hard boiled. Yeah. They're just they're just like regular eggs. They pick them up and they just yeah, they because they grab raw kids. Just, just, All right, mm, who's gonna right. who's gonna put this into Royer's for <coughs> to let us run the Easter egg hunt next year? Do we know the mayor? Tom, think, aren't, aren't you aren't you outreach pastor? You are. You are outreach. outreach, outreach. Get us in for, get us in, get us Sorry, in to run the Easter egg hunt next year. Yeah, give uh, give the mayor a call. We can make all the kids cry. Tell her to watch this episode first and then think about it. <laughs> We're going to hear from another lawyer. <laughs> I'm speechless because I can literally call a mayor and talk to her, but that's not Oh, happening. Big no? Willie. Is that what Big Willie? <laughs> yep. No, You're so on point she, with the contacts, She bro. comes to the church all the time. I know. Especially when you do uh, the community yeah, day. Yeah, Where are you at, Sean? Time. Where are you at on this one? I'm with you. I want to plan it. Yeah. yeah. You know, in plan. another state. <laughs> 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 Give directions. Yep. Like, listen, it's a 17-hour drive. You better get going. <laughs> if you better Sean, get going if you want one of those three eggs. Sean will, put egg, Sean, Sean will put eggs on top of traps where the kid will go grab it and fall in. I'm thinking. No, I'm just going to put out uncooked I'm, eggs and, like, put them out three weeks ahead of time and then give them that 17-hour ride. I'm thinking three eggs, 35 kids, <laughs> but one of the eggs has a $20 bill on it. <laughs> I'm let's thinking. This, I'm thinking. Exciting. We, we go to the next question. All right, yeah, let's fine, get these poor kids. Sorry, oh, today's terrible. kids. They still wouldn't oh. find it. They'd be too tired. Yeah, they'd be trying to find it on their phone. They'd be looking for an app. <laughs> Where's, the, Where's the Easter egg at? <laughs> they can't find it. That's <laughs> true. Sorry, I love you, youth. They just take off, start looking for Pokemon instead. Though, yeah, forget this. Oh, Char- Charizard. <laughs> he cooked the egg. That's why I can't find it's it. Pikachu. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, we... look, it's Togepi. That's kind of like an Easter egg. <laughs> All right. All right. Next mm-hmm. question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Would you rather spend a day planting vegetables in a garden Ugh. or spend a day hiking in the woods? Vegetables. That's an easy one for all of us. Yeah, I think I think that. I mean, we're all pretty. hiking. I think I'm planting the vegetables. Do it, do it. I'll, I'll nah, call. because have you ever been hiking? Like, I, we go on these hikes with Chuck and the teens. We get lost. Listen, two hours. Uh, <laughs> two hours. That's a nice hike. Five hours. That's a death sentence. So, <laughs> see, I'm down for a five hour hike. Not when you no, run out of water and granola bars. So, yeah, in, like, this if, is a whole day. If I'm planting yeah, vegetables, I'm down for that. I'm digging in the dirt. I'm taking a nap that. under a tree. I just, I'm, I'm planting the vegetables. Taking a sip. Food. Yep. Yep, absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm down for an all day hike. That's not Go to St. Yeah. Pete's and we'll I'll yeah, hike up there all, yeah, all day. day. I'm going splashing the water for a little yeah. bit. Heck yeah. I'm, I'm planting the vegetables. You got to plant vegetables? Whatever, guys. 
Again, yeah. Well, good. You guys get the vegetables planted. Tell yeah. them I'll come pick we'll them. Come and then we'll go on a hike. Yeah. We'll come on. A, we'll pick them. Then we'll take them on a hike. So yeah, yeah, thank you. That's really Appreciate nice. That. Of you guys. Yeah, we'll make sure you guys are well fed. I'm only planting uh, ghost chilies, though. Go ahead. Yeah. That's all right. Ghost Enjoy. And onions. For the record, and uh, the peanut gallery has tapped me on the shoulder and stated, "You don't plant vegetables. You plant seeds." Oh, <laughs> not the way Elijah and I do it, though. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the grocery store first. We open the bag of onions. We stick them in the dirt. And then they're like, look what we did. Miracle grow. <laughs> and then when they grow so fast, when they come over, Tom's like, those onions are on fleek. <laughs> there we go. Fleet. I'm sorry. They're on fleet. They're on, on fleet. fleet. You can't even mess it up right. I know. <laughs> you can't even mess it up right. Because we have a fleet of onions. Ugh. Nick. Okay, next question. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather have to waddle like a duck wherever you go? Yes. Yes. Or have to hop like a bunny? Waddle, waddle. Wherever. I'd waddle even if I didn't know what the other one was. Waddle, waddle all day. Yeah. But, I'll weeble wobble. Why? Because, because I tried both before the show, and hopping is really tiring. How did You didn't even know what the question was. You just hopped here? All the questions are on this paper. They're what? Oh, no, they're Sean not. put them on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They were in that the was, I know. I, I literally was, ran the test, and I waddle. Well, I could waddle I forever. I was pretending like we didn't know the questions ahead of time. I don't know. I haven't seen them. But you heard the question. So I you, did, and I would waddle because these knees ain't taking a bunch of hopping anymore. Yeah, now I'm yeah. too old to hop around. This belly and these knees... They're not hopping anymore. The only problem I worry about is waddling like a duck. Looks like I, everybody's going to think I just pooped my pants. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Nobody I'm judges you, brother. Nobody judges you, brother. Not after the last time. <laughs> well, <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> yep. Would you rather be allergic to grass <laughs> or be allergic to chocolate? I'm already allergic to grass, so... <laughs> Allergic to grass or allergic to chocolate. So you can't go so, outside or you can't eat uh, But that's anything. the thing, right? So I thought about my family, you know, I, and as much as I love chocolate, I would have to be allergic to chocolate because I cannot go outside and play with the family. That's true. Yeah, but you're not eating the grass. Sarah says she no, just, but that's just rolls like, on it and yeah. she explodes. You just go outside, somebody's cut the grass. You're, yeah, I got yeah. I to gotta be able to play with my grandkids. Yeah, they make Benadryl for a reason. <laughs> For the kids or for him? Both. <laughs> Both. Um, It'd be a good day. No, because I'm aware, I got <laughs> back to the kids. You wake Once up and start these poor grass, kids. Like, yeah, these poor kids. This is a PG-13 show. You wake up, you realize you missed a day. Do oh. we have high, that high a rating? Well, PG-13 today. Okay, well. So I'll far, be careful not to drop an episode. <laughs> so, so far, far yeah, <laughs> we've been R before. My best. <laughs> I will do my best to keep it in that rating. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go with the chocolate. I'm going to go with chocolate. It's I have just, no choice. Yeah. yeah. I like to, yeah. You We're supposed to, to build relationships with people as Christians. How are we going to be allergic to grass? How are you going to roll? Sarah out? does it very Listen, well. But <laughs> share, share chocolates with people, like those ones that came. I don't share my chocolate. You share that chocolate with somebody, I'm sure you'll build a relationship <laughs> real fast. I don't share my chocolate. I'm going to spread the word. I'm going to pray for you. I, I'm, I'm allergic to grass, so I'm going to spread the word like the guy from that cough drop commercial. There's three people in here we allergic to grass. We call up to that big old <laughs> Christ is back. Everybody, and you're going to ah. eat the chocolate then? Yep. <laughs> nice. Reese cup all day. All right, whatever. All right. That one was a tough one, though. I got to be honest. Okay. Would you rather have a magic Easter basket that produces ten chocolate eggs each morning, or would you rather have a pet bunny that can talk? Oh, I want the talking bunny. Why? All day. No. How do you oh, know that they're going to say anything yeah, interesting? Why, why, why doesn't matter. That? that doesn't even make sense. How doesn't about, matter. What if the because bunny just said, Dad, 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 Yeah, what if dad, he just keeps talking? Dad, and guess dad, what? In today's dad. society, how many people will pay to see a talking bunny say, Dad, 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 how they, many chocolate eggs can I buy with the money from people watching the bunny go, Dad, Dad, <laughs> Dad? I, 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 That's I, actually I, a pretty I, good point. Yeah, no, here, I'll break it down. Ready? Uh, uh -oh. So if I want to bring someone to Christ. Oh. Oh, so we were talking about okay, okay, okay. And, and you would have to choose between the talking bunny and making money, right? Or 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 sharing chocolates and building relationships. You would have to go with the chocolates. You went off the rails. He did because oh, I because I bur I bugged him with my answer. <laughs> what happened? I, I bugged him. Like, I bugged him with my I'm, answer. He yeah. was answer for that, but that's okay because now my bunny's saying Christ, 
Christ. <laughs> <laughs> He's preacher. Hey, Amen. I go with the talking bunny. I change my answer. Oh, Hallelujah, God. my brother. <laughs> talking bunny all day. How did I not pick that? I just, so, wow. I'm just getting a headache now. Yeah. You I build do. a relationship with the bunny mm -hmm. and teach him about the gospel of Christ. Yeah. He can and then you send him off. And, and, he, the and he does the hopping and you waddle. And the, yeah. It makes you win both. Boom. You, bam. You just make rabbits stew. <coughs> Whoa. Why do you got to kill it? Whoa. I'm just saying. I'm getting, Share a meal with somebody. I'm getting dumber by the second of it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because of your hat? I think. Um, oh. Uh, well, oh. there is that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of talking rabbits... You guys know the, the Easter story and why there's a rabbit and eggs and chicken. Oh, I, am, I don't know. We're going right to that right now? I knew. Let's do it. I knew that Sean was going to tell us the story of Easter. And I, I, have I, been, I, I am so excited. I do. I have a good one. I actually, I just, I just read up on this the other day. Uh, I was very excited to learn the information that I found out as to why there's a bunny and eggs oh boy. and chickens. Well, it's clearly because when Jesus was on the cross, there was a bunny and chickens hey, no, no, and chocolate no, no, eggs. No, you're off. You're I need off. chapstick for this one. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. My lips are real bad. Anybody else need a cup of coffee before we go? This might go into a distance. So let's do this. Idea. I would love coffee. Yeah, we're going through a lot of coffee today. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so you know when Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Right. And the apostles kept falling asleep? Yeah. Well, all he had was chickens to keep him company. Oh. And the guys kept call falling asleep, and Jesus knew what was coming. Were they big chickens or like peep size? Just, just like average size chickens, just what? regular, regular chickens. Okay. What's the source on that? Don't worry about the sources. Okay. I'm just curious. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's and, the and it's, I see. it's the new Hezekiah. <laughs> it's the <laughs> new international version. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's the NST, the new Sean translation. <laughs> I heard about that one. Yeah, it's a good Listen one. Listen here, <laughs> don't you start our shit on the NST. <laughs> All right. Come oh, on. Yeah. I got things to say here. There's a lot of cussing in that version. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> they, it's just, it's in Greek, though. You can't okay. tell. Right. It's in Greek. Once you know Greek, then you'll know. But, um, so when the chickens came, Jesus knew what was coming. So he was trying to prepare for what was going to come after he arose again. And he knew he was going to be hungry. He was going to be in the tomb for three days. So he said to the chickens, I need you to take and lay as many eggs as you can and go hide them. So when I come when I come back, I can have the apostles go look for the eggs. Right, because so there was no fish, or they were all out. There they had no, ar he no had already pulled, he already had the, the apostles pull them all out of the Sea of Galilee. So all the fish are in their boat. But now we got chickens. Okay. So now it's chickens, and he wanted eggs. Who wants fish for breakfast? Well, down south they do it. Well, that's true. <laughs> Jesus literally had fish for breakfast in okay. the Bible. Okay, but we're not talking about fish right now. <laughs> Let me tell my story. Okay, yeah, so we got the chickens, we got the eggs. He's got the chickens hiding the eggs. Okay, uh, he's got the chickens are chickens hiding are the eggs. The chickens are hiding the eggs for him. And the apostles are asleep. And the apostles are asleep at this point. Okay. 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 So, you know, so the chickens go out, they hide the eggs. The mm. problem was they had, they're small and they don't have arms. They don't have the little wings. So they had to like kick the eggs through the grass. <laughs> so the eggs got scuffed up with the grass. Right. So they <laughs> were painted like green. <laughs> Ah. So that's where the painting of the eggs comes from, from the chickens kicking them in the grass to try and... And through the dirt and through camel poo and, you know, donkey poo and whatever else they happen to come across as they were pushing the eggs <laughs> across. What, are you all right, Tom? You... <laughs> Go ahead, please continue. Okay, are we good? I, I don't know yet. All right. <laughs> that's the only poo that comes into the story. So okay. Sure. All right, so if you feel better about that now. Right, in Greek. I in just Greek. need... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you the Greek word for it later. So... Sorry. What's the Greek word for chickens rolling the eggs? I'm not sure. I'd have to look into my... Uh, into your own version. Into the Bible dictionary and find out what that is. I'll let okay. you know, though. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that. I think it's rollicus. We'll circle back. We'll Pookus. circle back. <laughs> rollicus and the pookus. Nice. <laughs> it might be close, but we'll find out. So anyway, so now, Jesus is in the tomb. He's already been crucified. This He's is in our the tomb. <laughs> Listen, would you just let me tell this story? I'm sorry. I just thought of that. Go my ahead. goodness. So Jesus is in the tomb. He's playing solitaire. He's hanging out by himself. And a rabbit sneaks in. Wait, 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 wait. Jesus is in the tomb. Playing solitaire. <laughs> hanging out by himself. That's what he's doing in the tomb. Okay. I just, I just wanted to make sure. I, I want to follow. Go ahead. What do you think he was doing in there? <laughs> just go ahead. I just... I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I'm, I see. So he's playing solitaire. He's kind of bored. He's by himself. This rabbit sneaks in. All right? So... Jesus starts talking to the rabbit. Rabbit starts talking. They have a beautiful conversation. <laughs> they go, 
What is so funny? Were they bicycle cards 2,000 years ago? Or they were just like I, stones? It's, yeah, it was stone tablets. Stone tablets. In carved Greek. by Moses. They were, you know, a gift. In Greek. They were a gift. At, uh, saved for that. At the manger. <laughs> the wise men brought them in a basket. That was the, that was the fourth gift you didn't know about. With Santa. Santa was involved in that one. So Santa was the fourth Santa king that you didn't know about. So... <laughs> I don't mess me up. I had it. Okay, rolling poo, solitaire. All right, so Jesus too. Now Jesus is talking to the rabbit. So Jesus says, "Listen, I have a special job for you. The gods won't see you because you're small. So on Sunday morning, I guards. Need you. He said guards. Gods. The gods. The Roman soldiers. Is that better? The gods. It means guards. I'm just translating. Go ahead. <laughs> soldiers. All right. I That's appreciate needed. that. Trust me. I appreciate that. <laughs> so the rabbit got out. And Jesus told him, come back on Sunday morning, and I want you to rabbit ninja kick the stone out of the way. So he, Jesus instilled superpowers into the rabbit, who we named Peter, by the way, after his best friend. Ah, uh, Peter Rabbit. Yeah, Peter okay. Rabbit. Okay, cool. After Jesus' best friend, Peter. Simon that makes Peter. sense. Wait, wait, when he told the rabbit that, he was, he was out, already out of the tomb? He was still He's in? in the tomb. Oh, he, this is Saturday night. Oh, this is Saturday they had, night. They had dinner. Saturday night. You know, they had dinner. Yeah. Jesus told the rabbit. The yeah. rabbit went home to his family. Yeah. Jesus went to sleep okay. so he could be ready and refreshed and ready right. for Sunday morning. Right. You know. So, Sunday comes. Peter Rabbit comes with his newfound ninja powers. And he just kicked the crap. Peter Rabbit? Peter Rabbit. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Peter Simon Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So he kicks the stone, and it just shatters. And the Roman gods don't know what, they're just scared. They all take off. Guards. They run. They run away. They don't know what's going on. So then Jesus and Peter Rabbit go out, and they start looking for the eggs. And where, when did the rabbit turn into chocolate? I said I wasn't going to talk about poop anymore in this episode. Oh, oh. Ne uh, read between that the lines was, on that, that was, one. That was My part bad. of his... Rolicus. All right. Rolicus poop. Part of his magical powers instilled on by Jesus. I feel like... the, the my, my general reaction to the story is this is the most heretical thing I've ever been in part of. <laughs> <Heretical>. <laughs> I, I have a question. Are you done? No, listen, I just, I, I had access to the new scrolls they just found. Oh. And that's where I found, I just translated it. It took me like a, this last week to translate those scrolls. And do you found. speak Greek? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I think you need to speak a little more than a little bit. <clears throat> Are you done? I, you know, yogurt, that's like Greek, right? Chabani? Yeah. yeah. Good enough? I think that's all you need to know for that story. That's, I mean, yeah. yeah. So, so I guess my question is this. Go ahead. So when you say Jesus was in the tomb, plain Dante, right? <laughs> Did you, so, do you doubt that he was in the tomb? I, 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 my question was, was, I guess at that point he already resurrected, but decided to still chill in the tomb? Is that what, you, was he, that what happened? It was he, dark three outside. Days. He had to wait three days. Oh, so he, he resurrected right away and just chilled for the next two Now, days. that's a good question that we could actually discuss. Oh, that's the no. part we can discuss? <laughs> <laughs> hey, good call. Good call. Do you, think it was, do you think it was palming the cards against the rabbit? No, I'm pretty sure Jesus knew where the cards were. I think he's. I think he could take care of it all. But I don't think Jesus needed to cheat to play poker. That's that's my. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now so. he was playing poker. I didn't say he, poker. He I, this, is their, this, this, this is, is their translation. This is a side conversation. We, we read it in the, uh, the the bottom part of the Bible. Yes, the, the bottom. Part. <laughs> the footnote to the, the commentary. Foot, the footnote to the scrolls. That's, that's, in, yeah, that's in my commentary. It's on in the shows. bottom. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't really know how to respond. I mean, I, all I asked Sean was to research how the chickens and the eggs and the rabbits got into Easter. I had no idea we were going to end up here. I mean, I'm glad we did. Just so that we could all pray about this. <laughs> you alright, Tom? I, I, I have one question for go, you. Go I right ahead. More, I need more questions. You have just so, one so, question? Well, I mean, I guess that's... <laughs> the only one. I, know what the, that's the, <laughs> I expected this to be a whole half-hour episode for just the questions on that story. Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. No, no because I, you're going to say it was on the scrolls, and that's how you know. So there's no... I mean... Yeah. Can I get a copy of this translation? <laughs> yeah. I'll it's gonna, it's I'll, gonna I'll be I'll autograph it for you. Too. I would love it's that. gonna be available available. It's for only got the soon. one story. <laughs> it's on the back of a it's a, two, it's a one page Bible. <laughs> and it's on the back of a Chibani <laughs> yeah, cup. It's yeah. on a Burger King nap. It's when you open it, it's on the bottom. You gotta lick the, the, the <laughs> way you see it. It's like a Snapple cap. Yeah. 
<laughs> the Snapple Cap Bible. There it is. Uh, yep, there that's what we need. It. That's this what we is, need. This is where I have to transition. From. <laughs> the world would be a better place if we had a Snapple Cap Bible. I like that idea. You heard or a worse place. First. I'm not sure. It might uh, be a worse look, place. We're going to start an iced tea company and put Bible verses on the bottom of our caps. So speaking of, uh, I, I would uh, I would encourage our viewers to do your own research. <laughs> I would always <laughs> on this topic. Our viewers to you should you research. should check into the validity of this Sean translation. And of the if you find any misinformation, feel free to say it on the comments. <laughs> feel free at to, Sean Conroy at Sean Conroy. Yeah. Guys, you can message me all you want if you want to discuss this Apart, more. Apart apartment number one twenty three, Sixth Street, Phoenixville. Sean Conroy, Massachusetts. Attention, legal department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a feeling there's going to be more lawyers involved. I think there's going to be a lot more lawyers involved story. with this translation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think. Th I think this sub contacting me soon. I'm pretty sure you just lost your district license. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty that. sure I just lost my entry to heaven. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to work real hard oh, to get back man. in the Lord's good graces after that story. So for the transition to our real topic tonight, what I'm gonna do is just turn it over to Tom. Good luck with that, buddy. Yeah, watch this. Watch what I'm Congratulations. gonna do. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going to start with the scripture, the the actual scripture from the actual A real version the, of the, the real, real version Bible. Of, of, of the Bible here. Sweet. <laughs> So, so guys, we're, just real quick before I get into scripture, um, it was kind of a, it was kind of a cool weekend for for us. Uh, we had revival, uh, which was amazing, which we're gonna talk about a little bit, and, and it was also on Easter weekend, which was phenomenal. I mean, it, we couldn't ask for anything better than that. Uh, Pastor Kerry Willis was just whew, talk about it wasn't even a sermon; it was a history lesson. He gave a three dimensional look at that last week of Jesus Christ. It was unbelievable the way he broke it down. If you um, haven't seen it, go back. You can still watch it, right? Yeah, you can still watch it. It's uh, one, two, and three. You can go to the Royce for now. We all shared it. But the reason I'm saying this is I know that Easter is over, and now here we are talking about it again, because what happened after Easter is so vital to everything that is going on. I mean, it's what we're called to do. It's what happens after this amazing story. Um, I'm going to read some scripture, and then I'm going to tie it in into... Something cool. So here we go. Let's do it. So it's, it's, it's a little long. But just bear with me. We're going to talk. Uh, it's Luke 24, verses 1 through 8. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman talk, took the spices that had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Mm. See, that right there proves that Sean's story is not real. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you. While he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remember this word. So for me, the excitement comes. Think about something that 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 in your life, in your specific life, that that you went through, that you it was just the most amazing experience of your time of your life. Like like if you went to an amusement park and you got on a roller coaster and that roller coaster was just the greatest thing ever that you ever experienced. You are gonna go tell other people about this roller coaster that you got on, right? So that's the kind of excitement that, that, that brings after Jesus comes back, after Easter, right? It's, it's to tell that good story, that exciting story that occurred, that, that just occurred. And, and, and that's what we're talking about because it stems to a lot of changes in my life that I've experienced in just this short week that we've, that we've already gone through. And, and we, since taking last week off, we felt it was important to kind of touch on what we are experiencing after Easter. At, what, what are we feeling after Jesus came back? What were the apostles feeling after Jesus came back? And that's the topic that we're going to dig into today. So, yeah, when we were in the, uh, the meeting about this show, we were talking about which apostle do you think you would be? You know, because we always, like, I don't know about you guys, when I read the story uh, 
of Easter, I read it like a history book. You know, unfortunately, a lot of times where you read it and you're like, oh, those events happened. Okay, I believe them. And, and I do believe them. And I believe them to be truth. But it's always... It takes a deeper read and a deeper meditation to actually put emotion into it, like trying to live through the people that were there. Because you got to remember, this wasn't just some event that happened. It wasn't just any other day. This was their friend. This was um, <clears throat> their leader. Uh, it was he. Jesus was fully human. And this is somebody that they lived with, ate with, talked with, walked with, learned from. And all of a sudden, they go through this experience where Jesus is coming into the town and they're thinking that he's going to be a new leader. And the only way they understand that is to be a political leader. And he's going to be, you know, exalted and like a king and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden they go from that, assuming that their friend and their leader, their their rabbi is going to be exalted and become a king to all of a sudden he's, he's arrested, crucified, and buried in the ground. And they're thinking, what in the world happened? You know, did, was all, was everything that we believed a lie? Or, you know, are they still believing? Are they, you know, not understanding what's going on? So that's why you have to, like, take a deeper meditation of the, the text to read, like, into the emotion of what that would have been. So to think about, like, what, how would I have responded to finding the tomb empty after Easter? I don't know, man. I wish, I think everybody says they would have responded <clears throat> like Mary, right? Where... All you know, they they see him. They're excited. They believe, and nobody wants to be Thomas. <laughs> nobody wants to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah dude, prove it. <laughs> Which one are you, Tom? Which one are you, Tom? I'm Mary. Yeah, Thomas is Mary. <laughs> <laughs> You're Mary. I, I'm just for me. It's 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 so easy. I mean, after it, all, we gotta do is tell the good story, the good news, the great news, right? And I just, I just, I mean, after, after this Easter thing, after the whole revival, for me, it just took a whole new meaning as far as the urgency to really, really spread the good news to people because it's literally all we are called to do. That's it. It's that simple. It's all we're called to do. Nothing else. I think I'm Peter. <clears throat> I think I'm Peter. Like, yeah, I believe, but uh, I'm sorry. I've screwed up. <laughs> but you see, so so so, are you asking the apostle because because are you so you're Peter beforehand? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm Peter after, where he sees Jesus and you know he's like you know sorry, you know that humility, that humbling experience. Well, mm -hmm. I, I I felt he was really truly sorry when 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 yeah yeah beforehand yeah, as well yeah, right yeah yeah that's how I always read that too. yeah that when he denies Christ he's like yeah automatically he just like broken. automatically like bam what you know <laughs> um. But then, you know, to, and I'm glad you say you're Peter because it's the right answer. It's the right answer in the sense that <laughs> let's go start building these churches, right? Yeah. Let's go help people. Let's go be there for people. Let's go spread the good news. And what are you, Elijah? I'm with it's, 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 uh, spreading it and the humbleness. Extremely humble. But spreading it, like, today, before I came here, we were driving here, and Elijah was like, I was like, oh, I see two guys out there, basically right behind the church, and they were playing with the basketball. So I was like, I sent Elijah in with KJ, and I was like, I got to go talk to these guys real quick. <laughs> and what do you think I told them? You invited them to Monday Night Basketball. And it's that easy, guys. I'm, I'm, really I get, I get excited. Like, that is like. Hang on a second. You talk to strangers? Yeah. All right. You're not supposed to do that. I, I, I was, like, a good distance away, so I had to actually yell at him. Okay. So, you know, and when I came close to a cliff, I was hoping he didn't, like, okay. not a cliff, but the, but, you know, at the same time, I, I used to think spreading the word was hard and complicated. Yeah, it's not. But it's not. It's only, and you know what? If it's hard and complicated, you're making it weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're making it weird. <laughs> no, but the way I, exactly yeah. the way I told him was, I was like, listen, we hoop for an hour, we stop. Talk about Jesus for a couple minutes, and we get right back to balling. Yep. You know, I was like, it's not like, and I'm not knocking any other church, but sometimes they like kind of like force the you. They kind of like force you to like. <laughs> That's what Elijah. Hey, I was raised in Baptist. Church. I was raised Baptist. <laughs> it's um, it, like some places they're like, hey, come in and play basketball, 
but you have to sit down for 20 minutes while we jam this down your throat, and it's not it's not like not that. Not like the Lutheran bathroom. I'm not going to go there. Hey, Sean, where, where is this going? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you throwing that over here. all out there. So. <laughs> What? I'm not trying to make friends. I'm trying to spit truth on uh, fleet. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. I, I, back on track. I, this whole you did. Yes, that. Sean. We'll get back Sean, why that, don't maybe. you get us back on track with your version of the Bible over there? <laughs> should, I, should I read from my Bible? No, please. My, right. no, no. I don't want to be involved in <laughs> so, this lawsuit. <laughs> that story you told mm-hmm. is actually, it, it, well, while I was talking earlier, I thought of something. The ridiculousness of the story is empowering. It's a powerful story, if you think about it, guys, because that story that he told, how ridiculous that story was, is how ridiculous people are when they, when, when, when they celebrate Easter not knowing the real meaning of it. Oh, wow. Now you're Thank going I after actually, everybody. I appreciate that because I was actually going to tie that story into it. Yeah, I because that's this. that's how I feel. If you're celebrating Easter and not even knowing that it's about as ridiculous that story, and that story <laughs> brought it out. Oh, man, Tom's getting angry. Look at that. Good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. you, your <laughs> argument is on. He's showing the shark teeth. <laughs> All right, Sean, what do you I got? get one in. So I think I, I, I will, because of being away for so long and then coming in, you know, a non Christian and becoming a Christian, I think for me, uh, I'm more like Mary, like excited and want to go out and spread the word. But what is most amazing to me throughout you know, the whole Easter process that from crucifixion to resurrection, Christianity was dead. It was totally in the tomb with Jesus Christ. Everybody disappeared. And you know what I love about that? The apostles were honest enough to write that in the Bible that we gave up because we were too afraid and we ran and hid. They didn't hide the fact. They didn't say, oh, we kept believing. We knew he was going to come back. They said, we had no clue. We ran and hid. We thought we were going to die. We didn't know what else to do. So they ran off. They took off. And Christianity was literally dead with Christ for three days Hmm. until he came back. And still, still the people that walked with him, Thomas, when he came back and his friend said, we've seen him. Mary came and said, we've seen him. Peter, I've seen him. The other apostles said, we've seen him. Thomas like, not me, man. I didn't see him. When I see him, then I'll know. Hmm. Like how many people today believe that an, a bunny runs eggs <laughs> all over the place? That's as ridiculous as the fact that there's a bunny involved, the fact that Christianity was completely dead. We might as well say that my story was 100% true because that's what could have happened in those three days. Yep. Because Christ was dead, he was in the tomb, and everything, all his ministry, all his following, his three years of work were gone. But the moment he steps out of that tomb, it's not even Mary coming. It's not even... Peter coming. It's not all the apostles figuring out. It's the fact to me that the Roman soldiers ran to hide because they knew yep, that they, they had trouble. screwed up. And not only are they in trouble because now they're in trouble with the Lord and Caesar. So then where do you go in that moment? You can't hide from the government and you can't hide from God at that point. How scared do you think those <laughs> Roman soldiers are? You I have about absolutely that nowhere to turn. Oh, man. Nowhere to turn. When that stone exploded or rolled away or whatever happened, yes. and Christ walked out, they went, oh, poop. <laughs> I don't know. What, like, guys, we got to go. Like, yeah. there is nowhere to hide. You can't hide from God because he just came back. Yeah. And Caesar's going to kill me. Yeah. So you have to make a decision in that moment. Do you believe or do you not believe? And I want to believe that those Roman soldiers that ran, they were out spreading the word as well. Like, listen, this dude died. He was gone. For, I sat there for three days with his dead body. Right. And he popped up and said, hey, how's it going? <laughs> or how are you? Do you guys hey, want some eggs? You? I know there's some <laughs> eggs hidden. They're kind of green, but we can go pick them up real fast. Wow. But yeah, I mean, literally, we were, it, we were dead. That whole, I mean, I don't think we spend enough time on the three days. You know, we say he was dead, buried, three days later he, he rose, rose again. again. Yeah. And as we sort of gloss over it every time, but it, the Bible says that when he died, the veil was torn in the temple. So the sky turned black, dead people walked around. I mean, what were, I mean, just, what do people think was going on? I That's mean, actually in the Bible. He's not making this stuff what? up. Yeah, I mean, what did people think, even if you weren't a believer in Christ, or if you were a believer in Christ, like, what is going on? 
And then that the, it's, it's sort of like it messes with my mind, too, to think that even though that stuff happened, Thomas still says, I have to see him with my own eyes. When, when his friends are telling him that we, we've seen Jesus again, you know, he says, I have to see him with my own eyes. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. You can just sit and meditate that on that for a long time. And, and meditate on the fact that a lot of people are always looking for that. Well, I need to see a miracle for me to believe. Well, I need to see this for me to, oh, I need to do this, you know. And, and, and I think if, you're, if, you're, if you need to see a miracle to believe, you'll, you'll always look for a reason to explain away every miraculous event as something else. I mean, if you really want to believe, you breathe in and you breathe out and go, I don't know how that happened. That's a miracle. Just every day that we wake up. The um, I know I know it's eight o'clock and and there's just so much yeah, good started, stuff here. We started, we did start late, late, so, so that's cool. But but I, I want to touch on revival for one quick second uh, of something that was just I was telling Sean about it earlier. That was just it changed my life and it changed Claire's life. And ever since then, we've just been on this whole. So so these walking prayers in the woods that Pastor Kerry was talking about. Once he went to the shutdown, he started just taking woods, uh, walks in the, prayer, uh, in the woods with his dog and praying to Jesus, right? So we had a death in the family, and we were, after the funeral, the next day was Easter, and we were going to go to the people's house because they were kind of doing Easter dinner, but it was more like a memorial dinner. Mm -hmm. And on the way there, Claire's like, you know what, let's go, uh, let's go walk on the trails and pray. And instantaneously, I didn't even look. I didn't even think about it. I was like, "That is such an amazing idea." That's a good idea, right? So, yeah. so then the craziest thing happened. We walked into the woods together, and, and the Lord took us separate spots. We just walked apart, right? And for like the next fifteen, twenty minutes, we were by ourselves. I finally, to make a long story short, I met back. I, it, it was if you guys had, Jesus was right there with me. It was the most amazing experience I've ever had. So, so then, to make a long story short, I came back to Claire, and I'm, she's like, you're all right, because I was bawling my eyes out. And it was the first time in my life that I realized that I am richer than my wildest dreams could mm. ever have had. Is like, that, I am the richest person in the world. Is that when you posted some people... Yeah, that's ours. when I posted that. That's exactly when I posted that. That, has, when I that has been that. on my mind all week. I love that post. Yep, that's when I posted that because I realized what, what was, I just started crying. It's on my Facebook. You I said just started, some people are so poor, all they have is money or something like that. Yeah. 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 Some people are so poor, all they have is money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just realized like, wow. Then I started thinking of what Jesus did. Then I started thinking of the grace that God has. I, I was a, a, not a very good person for a very long time of my life. Some right? people say you still aren't. And, yeah. And now I'm sitting here thinking, I can't even think of something that I would want. Right. God has given me everything and, and then some. Yeah. I got a pod. We, we got a podcast for over a year now. And, and it's just, it's just so, so anyway, to make a long story short, I, I, from, from revival, one of the many things I got is it's, it's important to just go alone in nature and start praying, and 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 then Jesus is just present there with you. It's beautiful. <clears throat> I had a moment with my oldest daughter today that I thought was pretty cool. I, um, <clears throat> I had a moment to I, that really that that affected me. I was been thinking about that all week, and I I I uh, was able to talk to Allison about you know what is true happiness, what is true peace, and what brings it. It's not. You know, uh, just explaining to her that it has nothing to do with the car that you drive or the house that you live in or anything. Because I said, when I was poor, I was who I was. And when I wasn't poor, I was who I was. You know, because the inner peace has nothing to do with the size of your bank account or the car that you drive. And it does not bring you happiness. So you have to, what Pastor Pete said on, at this past Sunday's sermon, I wrote it down. I wanted to bring it up. If you're not living with an increased level of fearlessness... <laughs> then you're not living as a disciple of Christ. And what I'm getting at mm. is that peace that comes from Christ doesn't come from anything else. If you claim to be a Christian, and this is what I think what Pastor Pete was saying on Sunday, what do you do with Easter? You have to, I mean, you have to fully digest it, fully meditate on it, fully understand that it was a world-changing, life-changing, interpersonal act that Jesus did for each and every one of us. And the point I think that we're trying to get across with this episode is that you cannot read these events and go, yeah, that happened, move on. 
It's, yeah, that happened, and that is the reason for living. That is the reason for living. So what do you do with Easter? I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit upset that I wasn't on the show, that we didn't have a discussion like this last year, because next year I have to look at Easter from a whole new light. Like, you guys are showing me so many different aspects and so many different ways that it could be viewed and, you know, different ways I probably could feel about it. And I, 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 wish, I wish I had that, 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 that vision before today, which is why I'm sitting here in, in awe because everything you guys are saying, you're not scholars or anything, but it sounds <laughs> profound. Yeah. Like it's, it sounds extremely good. Like, um, when I got from Revival with... Uh, with Pastor Kerry Willis, like the, his second sermon, um, I was told that if if the preacher or the pastor sermon seems as if they're talking to you directly, then that's that's a special kind of connection. Yeah, and, and that's not the pastor. That's not the pastor that's talking to you. That's that's Christ. That's, that's Christ. To you. It was it's, it was like he was talking to me directly. You know, it's like somebody can say, "Hey." I've been through what you're what you're going through. They can say it a million times, but when someone who doesn't know you speaks on it and it's almost like to the T, like what you experienced, yeah, that was a sobbing moment. Yeah. That was definitely a sobbing moment. Like I need to see more uh sermons by Pastor Kerry Willis. But one, Revival was amazing. The one thing I did different this Easter than i never done before, and, and I got it from Revival, was I, I Good Friday. I, I'm still having a hard time with the – I understand why it's called Good Friday, but I still have a hard time with it being good. good. I literally – Friday and Saturday, I was just, it was just a dark time in my life. I was just really, really upset and, and, and lost. and Because and, 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 he said – he said Friday, he said – it, it, that that uh no no because because Easter was the following that last service he said he says my my I want you to feel I don't want you walking away from this service yeah. feeling real good and happy and smiling yeah I, yeah that's yeah. what he said and that was for Monday Thursday right although he did it on Sunday night yeah. so when Thursday came around I really started thinking of the story and placing myself not in it but just trying to connect as much as I can to what jesus was really going through you know and then he literally turned to sin and god just left him right and mm -hmm. it's just oh man he did that for us yeah so the question would be and the other thing was but we're uh, barabbas that really hit me hard that really hit me really hard but that's another topic yeah. Yeah. i'm actually <laughs> i'm actually gonna do a sermon on it that's that's easter part three yeah, Elijah. What's the title for that one? <laughs> Easter Part Three. <laughs> We're not finished. <laughs> so, I, I guess it comes down to this. We're talking about the disciples' reaction to Easter, and I guess it comes down to this. We believe that the Christ was put on a cross, crucified, put in a tomb, dead, buried, dead for three days, arose, the stone was rolled away. Mary was excited, met him on the road. Thomas needed to see the nails in his hands. Peter was apologetic and humble. What was your reaction? Because after Christ was dead and buried and came back, we all need to meet him. What is your reaction? Do you need more proof? Do you need to see the scars? Are you willing to live on faith? How do you meet Jesus after Easter? That's something that we all need to think about. That's a good wrap up there. All right, guys, if you have any prayer requests at this time, please feel free to post them. Randy, I got yours. Um, if I don't catch it before I start praying, I will write it down and I will pray for you during the week. If you have prayer requests you don't want to post, please feel free to hit me up uh, however you want. You can call me, you can email me, you can send me a message on Facebook and we'll get that taken care of. So Dave, what do you got this week? With everything going on, I'm just feeling pretty blessed. So, just praising it. Praising God's glory. All right, Tom? Uh, I want to pray for my sister. She had uh, total knee replacement today. And 
Uh, she's out of surgery, but just in a lot of pain. Okay. So just for, so for a speedy recovery? Speedy recovery, yeah. All right. Elijah? Let me come back to you. Yeah. Need a minute? Yeah. All right. I'm going to pray. Uh, guys, this week we <clears> had <throat> six new members instilled in our church this week. Um, one of those being was that your sister yeah, one of and them. your mother and Amin. And uh, we had Derek and Anna and uh, Andres. My son Andres was all. all and uh, I also want to pay for the other two. Uh, I won't mention any because I don't know what they want. But the two that went to membership class and are still trying to figure out where they belong. I, I want to pray for them going forward, too, that they find where the path that God's leading them on. Amen. So, Amen. Sarah? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty happy right now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's a big praise for us. It is. Awesome. <laughs> Sarah's happy. Wait, it's a praise that we're at the end of an episode and she's happy? Yeah. Yeah, no, I no, agree. No, my happiness has nothing to do with the episode. I'll, oh. It, oh my happiness has nothing to do with you guys. She's like, I zoned out for the last hour and ten minutes, so don't worry about me. She's like, just got a great nap. <laughs> I'm happy the technology finally works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll praise that. We'll praise that. Little, you got anything? Um, grades for the last month and period. Grades. Kyle, you got anything? No, I'm good. All right. All right. Elijah, back to you. Unspoken? <sighs> yeah, that's too unspoken. You, I, I, I felt like you had a... It's a lot. And it's ace up lot. your sleeve. No, it's a, no, it's just a, a <laughs> lot. A lot. All right. We'll pray for that. All right, guys. Let's pray. Father God, as always, we come to you humbly and in thanks. Because, Lord, my goodness, what you just achieved. You <laughs> died for me, for us, for the world. Yes. You gave up everything, everything. I don't mean that lightly. You gave up everything for somebody like me, for somebody like these guys, for Barabbas, for all of us. Lord, we are just so thankful that you died and you came back for us. <laughs> Lord, I have so many things I want to say. Uh, Lord, we just praise you for everything that you're doing here in our lives, just all around, Lord. There are so many small miracles every day. If we would just take the time, take a moment. I love the fact that you gave us time last week not to be burdened with coming in and doing ministry. Not that that's not a beautiful thing, but you gave us time to just be in fellowship with each other. We got to hang out and goof off. And yes, we need forgiveness for the movie we watched, Lord. <laughs> but we praise everything that you're doing. And Lord, be with Lizette through her surgery. We know you brought her through it. Now we know you will bring her through the recovery process. We hope that that will go speedy, speedily with no, uh, no problems, no complications, that she can get back to her uh, normal routine. Um, Lord, for the unspoken, you know it. You know our hearts. You know our minds. There is nothing we can hide from you, Lord. So we give that to you. We lay that at the foot of the cross because you took that already. You took it, you buried it, and you brought it back to the Father. And it's gone. It's not our burden anymore, Lord. So let us remind us of that. Lord, I want to pray for those new members that joined our church this week. They took a step of faith in following you. They found a home that you've called them to, Lord. You called them into this family. Not this building, but this family family, this church, the members of the church and everything that that entails. They've already on fire to serve you, Lord. And Lord, for those that are still questioning, trying to figure out where they belong, Lord, guide their steps. 
put wisdom in their minds and put hope in their hearts because we know that you have a plan and you will guide them in the right direction. Lord, for little E's grades, he's fighting, he's trying. We know you're with him. Get him through this last semester. Help him get through it, Lord. Guide him. Give him the wisdom. Help him retain whatever he needs to do, Lord. Be right there with him. Well, we were praised for Randy's daughter. She got to go back to school today, like so many other children across the state. I don't know what, all what schools, but I know a lot of schools went back today. Um, people get to back to a, I don't know what normal is, but I guess that's what we're calling this, like the new normal, but that people got to be together again. Kids got to be kids again. And that you kept it safe and you would continue to keep all those kids safe. What? for everybody that's still suffering with what's going on with the COVID pandemic. Would, would you help guide that process? I know we pray for it a lot, Lord, but be with everybody that's still dealing with that. Uh, for Randy's cousin, Eric and Amber, who are looking for a house search, they're trying to make a move. Uh, I don't know if they're moving to come back home to be closer to family. I don't know what that is, Lord, but you know what that is. But Lord, make that transition as smooth and as simple as possible, it can be a real stressful situation. So make that as easy on them as possible, Lord. Lord, my, my. I don't even know where to begin, Lord. With all the things that you do on a daily basis, every hour, every minute, every second of every day, you never stop working for our benefit, Lord. You never stop caring. Even if we've turned our back on you, we've cursed you, we've spit in your face. You love us through all of that. You loved us so much. So much. That you sent your son to die for us. You will be in heaven with the scars that remind you of what we used to be. What we have to leave here when we get to come home to you. We become new in you, but you are still stuck with our brokenness. And you don't care because you love us that much. That you would take all that pain, all that suffering. So that we don't have to. Lord, <laughs> there is nothing. There are no words. There are no thoughts. There are no praises I can give you that are deserving. But I give everything. We give everything we have to you. It's not enough. It'll never be enough but it's all you want. And so we gladly give it. And we are thankful that you accept it. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. And we pray in your precious name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Forever wounded. Man, how about that? How about that? Forever wounded. We get new bodies, right? But he, he's got to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. <clears throat> Needs a minute. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Uh -huh. Have a great week, everybody. We love you. See you next Tuesday at 7. Love you all.